Hi everyone, um, my name is Mia, I'm the uh, Industry Programmer for the London Short Film Festival this year. Uh, welcome to uh, the festival and the Art Film London Talk. Uh, it's great to see so many of you here, we've got a really busy, uh, really busy uh, event today, so uh, glad that you can all come along. Um, we're sort of halfway through the festival now, you know, we've been really, really busy, uh, there's lots to do, there's still networking events going on tomorrow, um, all weekend we've got events going on, so I hope that you can uh, all come along. Uh, this is Jo from Film London, who will be chairing the panel today, uh, and we will have time after the event for questions, we have a roving mic going around, so if you could hold on uh, for asking a question, that would be wonderful. Uh, thank you. Okay, hello, hello everyone. Hello, my name is Joe Cadre. I am the Production and Talent Development Coordinator at Film London. And uh, I'd like to welcome you all here to this uh, panel discussion about short film funding. On my left, I am delighted to introduce Emily Morgan, filmmaker, and Andy Potsidis, uh, independent consultant. Is that all right? Um, uh, sorry. Emily uh, has... Uh, plenty of experience as a filmmaker and I'm going to ask her to, uh, to explain that a little bit more and Andy also has uh, a career history in, in production but um, is, our, is our today's expert on crowdfunding so if you've got any questions on crowdfunding then that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about today. Can you hear me at the back? Yes. Yeah? Okay. All right well um, to get things started Emily would you mind telling us uh, how you got into filmmaking, how you first became a filmmaker, and then um, I'll, I'll ask you a few more questions about uh, your latest film, Physics, which uh, Film London's had an involvement with. Yeah, so I've done quite a range of things. I started off just with a huge passion for film and trying to decide what I'd most like to do, and I, initially I thought that was editing. So while I was at university, I just started teaching myself Final Cut and basically trained to be an editor, um, so I did that for a bit. Then I moved, I sort of, for a long time I had no desire to be on set, and so then I went into distribution, um, and then I did start kind of starting making my own short films, music videos, and realized I did kind of like the real kind of hands-on filmmaking process, and so yeah, I went into freelance production work, and then I did a, an MA in producing at National Film and Television School, and now I'm kind of a freelance producer, production manager, yeah. lots of different things, and script reader as well. Mm. Yeah. So, um, one of the ways that, that I've uh, met you, uh, Emily, is through uh, your recent short film, Physics, directed by Claire Oakley, <coughs> uh, which was uh, part financed by Film London. Um, and I'm very proud to be associated with this film, and it was shown last night at the London Short Film Festival. It was shown uh, last year in October at the London Film Festival. Yeah. Um, so uh, I really hope that it goes on to a prestigious international film festival career. Um, but how did you first get into that? How did that film come to you? And, and can you take us, give us an overview of how that project happened? Yeah, well, it was actually kind of, it's probably the film I'm most proud of because it happened in such a sort of organic way where I met a writer that I really clicked with and as I guess ultimately I'd most want to be a creative producer so I met so we just clicked and we started talking about kind of crazy places in England that she'd been to and sort of thoughts she'd had about stories and, and a script came from that and so we spent a long time kind of just talking about the story and, and creating this script and it just yeah it all sort of developed very organically and then so then once we felt it was ready and we were prepared to show it to people, we started looking at funding options, uh, which is how we came across the borough, the Film London Borough Scheme. And so we applied to that, and that was a great way to kind of launch the project, launch, launch financing the project, because although we knew that to make the script we had, we'd need more money than that, it was a good way to go to other potential funders and say, we've got this money, you know, it's kind of endorsed by Film London. Um, you know, will you support us as well? And, and kind of bit by bit, we got our full budget together, and, um, hmm. and that, that's. Can I? Yeah, just thing. just Sorry. to. No, it's good. I, that, that's. I wanted you to come on to the to the Borough Film Fund yeah. Challenge, which is a scheme that Film London runs, and which uh, had a submission deadline uh, last December, and which we hope will have another submission deadline again uh, in 2013. I don't know how many how many people are aware of the Borough Film Funds. 
Okay, great. So I don't need to go into, into too much detail. But just to explain that Emily um, applied to the West London uh, branch of the Borough Film Funds, which is the Short School Fund in Wandsworth and Kensington and Chelsea. Uh, and you were successful in your application, and you got, I don't know, how much money did they give you in the end? Uh, we got 4,000 in the end. 4,000? Yeah. Uh, and your overall budget for the film was much more than that though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 11. Really? Yeah. Oh god, yeah. I didn't realise it was that. Yeah, yeah, because um, that's why we, we did the huge Indiegogo campaign as well. Okay, so. um, but you didn't get all the money from, uh, we'll talk about the Indiegogo campaign in a second. Um, you also, um, through a professional association of Claire's, managed yeah. to squeeze some money out of working title, I believe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they also gave us a kind of not actually a huge amount, but it was enough again to have another kind of endorsement and look working title are interested in the film. So, yeah, that was, and then yeah. Tomboy Films as well. And if, you, if you've never heard of that, I've, I've spoken to the people at working title who do occasionally give out this very, very... Um, uh, not, they're not unusual, they, they actually do give out small awards to filmmakers yeah. that uh, submit their projects to them. So if you've ever uh, thought, who could I apply to, which big production company should I send my amazing project to to get some uh, cash out of the private sector, then Working Title are not a bad place to try that with. Yeah. Um, so Working Title gave you maybe a thousand, yeah, exactly. something, something like yeah. that. Uh, maybe a bit more, I can't remember. No, and it was a thousand. It was a thousand. And then you, uh, then you tried, then you had the Indiegogo campaign. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. so uh, tell us a bit more about that. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to you in a minute, Andy, because obviously you know a lot about about Indiegogo. Um, but Emily, yeah. if you could sort of lead us into the Indiegogo campaign. Yeah. So. Um, we, we did the, is it called fixed funding, where you set an amount that you want to get a target, um, which I don't know if that was the best idea or not, but anyway, we did. And um, we, yeah, so we launched the campaign. We did a sort of very cringy video uh, of ourselves talking about the project, sort of like a pitch video, which I think is essential for Indiegogo. And um, yeah, and then we put it all over the internet, Facebook, just unashamedly as many, you know, we tried um, putting the link on forums and I think it's, yeah, what we realised is that you really have to push it out there. And I think, yeah, I, I kind of was quite nervous about that initially of kind of, you know, trying to get all this money from my friends and family and trying to, you know, publicise it that much. But I think you, yeah, if you want to do it, you have to, you have to be quite and so brazen about it. How much money did you make out of the, the Indiegogo campaign? Um, so then we got five thousand pounds from that. Wow! But I think it was really—I mean, it was—it was tough to yeah. to really push and push. But yeah. Yeah. So, it, it, Andy, just, could you explain what your affiliation is with with your you, relationship? With you know, Indiegogo? basically, uh, until a few months ago, I didn't even know what crowdfunding was. But my my connection with Indiegogo has come via um, a client of mine who's a Hollywood producer, an independent. Called Brad Wyman, so he produced Monster and Blitz and uh, you know several other. Um, that's Monster starring starring Charlie Oscar, Oscar, Oscar winning yeah, Charlie the Rock. Yeah, that's the one got Oscar for. Um, but he, along you know, for the, my connection with him and sort of my connection with filmmaking in general, it, it basically comes. I used to work in production, then I spent a year in Hollywood, um, you know, in script development, and then since then, when after coming back to London. Um, I've got a, a group of like four or five Hollywood producers who use me for diary management service. So I've seen the way that they raise funds. Anyway, long story short, sorry. Um, so I, I've just done a, a business trip in October. I went off to Los Angeles um, and caught up with Brad. It was just an informal meeting. He's like, hey, have you heard about this? I'm like, no, what is it, basically? And he's like, well, this is crowdfunding. This is what we're doing. And, this is, and I'm now the film consultant for Indiegogo. Anyway, they then decided they wanted to come to London to do their launch in December. Um, so the whole team came over and it was me basically that organised their launch. So in that respect, I, I, you know, I've sat through 30 presentations about crowdfunding. Yeah. So whilst I don't have the practical experience that Emily's got in terms of crowdfunding yet, um, I can tell you about sort of how it all works in the background for this particular company. Sure. So and I was I was at uh, this presentation by Brad Wyman with yeah. with you there, and essentially what Brad was doing was coming to the UK uh, to 
alongside Kickstarter. Kickstarter has sort of stolen a, a march a little bit on, on Indiegogo. They were already um, making some headway in, in the UK. Well, they launched they launched on Halloween, actually, Kickstarter in okay. the UK. So, so they, they did steal a march, as you say. Uh, and so Indiegogo was keen to, to let people know about what they were or what they were doing. Yeah, so, you know, you know, I think they see the UK as a good market for crowdfunding because people are a people, especially from the creative industries, because you know the, the people are very internet savvy. They know how social marketing works. They've got access to all of the stuff that they need. So that they, you know, it wasn't just about you know being scared about Kickstarter that they wanted to come here to launch their brand. Absolutely, yeah. So and then they, so this is a good opportunity to. To, to explain what what the big differences are between something like Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, Indiegogo's big USP is that they, they have this flex. They have two options on flexible funding. Just going back to what Emily was saying, it probably wasn't the right wasn't the right option to go for as a filmmaker. Um, so just let me explain the differences between. Okay. Them. F fixed funding is basically you run a campaign. Um, and then you pick a target, and if you don't hit your target, um, then if, if you've picked um, a fixed funding campaign, then the money goes back. If you choose flexible funding, then you, you pay. Then basically, if you don't hit your target, then you get you get to keep whatever the money is. And the fees are high, am I right? The fees are higher for the non. Well, no. On, on, a, on a fixed funding campaign, all the money. If you chose a fixed funding and you don't hit, then the, then you go back. But then on a, on a flexible funding, yes, it goes from four percent up to nine percent. So yes, you're, you're I think absolutely. that's why we chose the fixed. But then it was quite yeah. scary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that does put things back in. in a, you know, there, there are a couple of questions come up from the flexible funding campaign a lot of the time. My, my initial reaction was, well. Hang on a minute, isn't that a bit of a cheat to keep the money if we haven't hit our target? And, you know, it took me a little while to get my head around this and a couple of presentations, but actually, I don't think it is. So, you mean that, that um, the company, the crowdfunding company, keeps a larger percentage of the, of if, the money? If, if, you've chose, if, if you've chosen a fixed funding campaign mm -hmm. and you don't hit your target, your money all gets returned. Right. So, this is why I'm saying for you guys, probably not the best one to choose. Right. With flexible funding, which is one of Indiegogo's big USPs, they were one of the first ones to introduce it. I think sponsors we do it here as well, but I can, don't quote me on that. Um, Kickstarter don't, they only do fixed funding. Yeah, I understand. Indiegogo's big USP, they're very proud of it, is that they offer this flexible funding option. So the flexible funding is 4% if you hit your target, that's what you pay in a commission. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't hit your target, you keep the money on a flexible funding campaign, but you pay a part higher commission, which is 9%. Okay. So is that, is that clear? Uh, well, there's yeah. plenty more questions about, about the differences between Kickstarter yeah. and, and Indiegogo. I just wanted to check, who's, has anybody here actually done a crowdfunding campaign? Wow, that's, that's quite a few of you. That's what, six, seven, eight out of, out of, uh, out of 80, approximately. Um, so if you guys do have questions about uh, crowdfunding or about funding in general, or um, any questions for Emily about her experiences, um, there'll be time in the end um, for you to just put your hand up at the end um, and um, I'll look forward to, to hearing your questions. But coming back to the uh, USPs of uh, yeah, thank Indiegogo. You. So th th that's the big one. That's the, the second one that they're also very proud of is that they have this, you know, back end, they have an algorithm called Gogo Factor. They call it Gogo Factor. Okay. Um, so this basically means that... Th you know, for you to get to front page, which is where you want to be, where any campaign wants to be, you basically have to work. It's done, it's, it's, the algorithm works, it's done on the activity that you do. So that means you have to make regular updates, you have to get other people tweeting about you, you have to do face, get them talking about you on Facebook. Um, bloggers are really great if you get them doing something about you, um, if you get anything in the press. But all, all of this, the cumulative effect of all of this gossip, what, this noise that you're social buzz, networking, basically yeah. buzzing, as you, you're getting the buzz going, mm. which, you know, as filmmakers, most of you will understand that you need to do that. Um, but that, that basically means that you, that's what decides who goes on the front page. So the more activity you have, the more likely you are to get on the front page. But, you know, and that, if that sounds like a lot of work, it's because it is. <laughs> and that was Frank, our aim. But that's the downside. The upside is that actually it means that if you're, even if you're only raising sort of 5,000, 6,000, and don't get me wrong, it's a lot of money, but if you're competing against, against, against um, campaigns that are running 100, 150, 160,000, you've got just as much chance to get on there. So there was one little, there was one little um, short that actually, they started the day that Brad arrived in London, so it was great. Um, 
but they, they both called Jeffrey's Bell, um, and they managed to get front page within the space of about 20, 20 days, and they knocked Hurricane, they, 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 all, of, all, of the, all of the front page campaigns had been previously about Hurricane Sandy, right. which is a difficult one to knock off, but they knocked it off, so they got onto the front page themselves just by... What's, what's the big advantage of being on the front page? Well, the bigger, well, more people see you from outside of your network, so okay. you're more likely to get donations, especially if it's something from, you know, what, what you want is, is top visibility, as in, as in as you would with any website. So, you know, if, you, if you're sort of promoting whatever it is, then you want to be on front page of Google, for example. The, the principle's exactly the same. So, you know, it works in the same way. They've got an algorithm that's done, it's done on the activity and the changes that you make. So what you need to do when you're planning a campaign is factor in making regular updates. This is really a key factor. Okay. One of the key top tips that you, you would need to sort of, you know, when you're doing it, you need to figure out who's going to do what and how you're going to schedule it. My, my advice would be do it like you would with, as a normal production schedule. So, right. you know, th there are certain lengths of time of a campaign that work better. Um, so how long? Uh, would it, well, on average, like? well, 30, between 30 and 60 days is actually the optimum. Right. Um, so the actual optimum, and they've got all of the, Indiegogo have got all of these stats, you know, they you know, got a bit bored of it by the end of it, but it's actually mm. 47 days. So, right. and you know, there's a whole bunch of things, they have, a, they have a research department that can look at all of the stats and say, well actually they came back into Brad whilst we were going round and said, look, Tuesday is the best day to launch. <laughs> Like, and don't ask me why, I don't know, but you know, a lot because of they've, they've got yeah. a lot of projects that are going through yeah. and they can see I mean, what and, the success and, you know, is. Like. The rest of it is sort of sensible stuff, so we all know about Follow Me Fridays on, on Twitter, so an update on a Friday is probably quite a good day. Um, and and, and you, you, you know, really it's about the activity that you're prepared to put in that, that brings you front page. And, and you want to be front page because that's when more people that are outside of your network okay. get to see you. So I get the thing about the front page now. Cool. Um, there's, there's other unique selling points that I, that I didn't know or that I'm not aware of on other crowdfunding sites. And other crowdfunding sites are available, by the way. Yeah, they're saying, um, oh my God, it's a really competitive market. They, they, I mean, there are lots of English ones as well. I've done all my sort of analysis. I'm no expert, by the way, but I've done my analysis. So it's, um, worth, it's worth mentioning uh, Sponsor Me. Sponsor Me is the, uh, is the UK one. That's a, that's a big U UK one specifically. Yeah. I mean, you know, are obviously. The big players in the US are Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Those yeah. are ones that we compete. But there, there are lots of little ones um, that are popping up. So there's also WeFund, which is an English one that looks quite good to me. So, you know, okay. I don't know the people behind it, so I, I wouldn't like to comment on what goes on back end. Yeah. But I suppose you can usually tell when you go to a, a crowdsourcing website, you say, how many film and, film and television or moving image projects have you had or on your through your go through your website and if it's less than 100 or less than 50 then you kind of get a sense that this might not be the place for you whereas if you, you go to somewhere like sponsor me you can immediately see that there's quite a yeah. lot of moving image stuff there's also you know ask your colleagues there, there are more people they I mean, in this room alone we've had what three four people who've done five people at least who've done their own crowdfunding campaigns and it's really important that you do actually talk to each other and say, look, why have we gone for that one? Why are you doing that? And why are you doing that? I mean, the whole idea of crowdfunding is all about collaboration. And, and you know, your filmmakers, you should be used, you know, I'm sure most of you are used to collaborating <laughs> and getting teams together to make things work. And then, and then the final, sorry, if I can just go back to the final USP for Indiegogo, mm. um, is that they have a, a basic, it's basically, essentially, they call it a happiness department. It's very American. but. Um, Excuse me, but I sort of think it is. It's spelled H A P P I N E S S, typically, but it's Silicon Valley. Um, essentially, yeah. it's a customer services department. So, when you're planning your campaign at any point in your campaign, um, you have someone that you can email and talk to. So, it's a 24 hour department based in San Francisco. Right. Um, so, that if you've got any good. No, well, it's yeah. essentially, it's customer services. So, if you, you know, try to get an answer out of other websites, it's sometimes very difficult, but they, they're really strong on it. So, they have a they have a target of responding to everything in two hours. Um, right. It is a 24 hour call center, so you know, they're, I think they prefer stuff done over emails. Uh, but it does mean that when you're planning your campaign, if, if you've got any questions or you're not sure what might work and what might not work, um, you can email them and you can do all of that before going live. Um, and then the other feature they've got that's really interesting is you can, you can basically prepare your campaign online as before going live. Um, and then sort of test stuff out with your friends. So that, that's what I would suggest. Okay. So there's two more things I've just uh, quickly checked that we haven't uh, touched on, which I think are important. 
Um, one was currencies, because um, that was an issue for you, Emily, wasn't it? Yeah, we had a problem with well, the current. You have to use the PayPal currency conversion rate, but I think it may have changed now. Yeah, I mean, this was, this basically was Indiegogo's launch in the UK, so now you can you can run campaigns in pounds, euros, or dollars. Okay, essentially. So, that, so that's that's that's, sort of that's, that's sorted now. Uh, and the other thing is the perks. That's that's the big major marketing difference be between how you promote an Indiegogo project, isn't it? Well, I think all of them. You know, I think all of them invite you to give perks. You know, I think that's the whole point. Okay. I mean, I that's the whole point of crowdfunding. Yeah, exactly. Generally. Okay. Um, so you know, just a little bit on the perks. They are quite. In the, I mean, I don't even really know where to start on the perks. <laughs> Um, my advice would be give a the whole range. I mean, you'll know what a perk is for essentially. Yeah, it's something that you give to someone who's giving you a bit of money. And there's a, you know, these are these are like a, a free DVD of a, of a film. If, yeah. you, if you invest in this film, the very least you might get at yeah. the end of it is a, a copy I mean, of the film. I think that the important a ticket to the end to the opening. Or I think the important thing okay. to remember is that with the perks, you, you have to be really careful about sort of. Yeah, I mean, you have to analyse how much it's going to cost you to deliver the perk. So if it's going to cost you the sort of ten dollars or ten pounds to get a T-shirt printed and post it and 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 and, then you know there's no good offering that perk at five pounds and thinking great, it's a bargain, you know, because you end up losing money. On sure. That. So you know you do have to be sensible about it. The other thing, the other mistake that often gets made, is to offer ridiculously priced perks. So you, it's no good getting a logo printed on a mug and then asking two hundred fifty pounds for it. Um, the perks that actually work better are the experience, you know, the, as per brand, the, 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 the ones that offer an experience. Mm. So, you know, things like well, the one that he quoted was there's a guy came along and uh, was offered the chance to hold the boom for a day on set in one of the films, and that went for like 500 bucks or something. <laughs> Just ridiculous. So, what you want to look at, a perk, and you should go online and have a look at our campaigns that are fully funded and see what perks they've got. If you go on the Indiegogo and some of the other websites as well, they normally have a section which is, you know, the, the, what are the 12 top, top 12 perks of 2012. Um, a lot of the time, depending on what you're doing, it, it, you know, if you've got a finished product, some people do have a finished product, it's the, it's the little things to engage your audience. Mm -hmm. So if you're giving previews of people that have contributed, if you're giving previews of a film, you know, if you're in a position to offer a little preview of a film to people that are giving money, then why wouldn't you do that? You know, as a way of engaging, what, you know, I think the, the big important thing to remember about crowdfunding is not just about money, it's about engaging your audience. So, and that sort of comes if they're engaged with you personally or engaged in your project personally in some way, um, i.e. they're interested in the subject matter. So, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, to, to give a concrete example, Emily, what, what, um, what perks did you offer for your, for your crowdfunding campaign? Um, we had, I'm trying to remember, I think we had the credits thing, so we knew that was a good, easy, free one. Um, so you could get credit on the film, like a special thanks, and then a copy of the DVD, and then it went up to kind of, you know, tickets to the premiere, uh, tickets to every screen, and then the next, you know, tickets to every screening it ever has, um, and then executive producer credit, I think, if you gave some crazy amount, but we didn't get any of them. <laughs> I think I think also the other thing with perks, certainly with Indiegogo, is that it, you, should, you shouldn't is give different ranges of of price points. So you know, do a one dollar one, do a five dollar one, do a ten dollar one, twenty five. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to be talking in pounds now because you can do it in pounds. Yes, now. the same. But yeah, twenty five pounds, fifty pounds, five hundred pounds, thousand pounds, and you know, you might want to chuck out a really silly one that you know you thought up for five hundred, whatever. Um, you know, but also you can limit your perks. This is also a good little tip. Um, so, because there's nothing, if, if people see the numbers going down, they're more likely to buy. So, does, does that make sense? So, it's, as in a sale, you're more, as in if you're going to a sale, you want to buy before the sale ends. So, if you've got five perks only available, if, if people have already done four, you're going to be like, oh, okay, well, I'll take that last five. It's like a limited edition. Don't be afraid to change your perks up. If one's not going, you know, if you've got zero on it, then change it halfway through your campaign. That's an update. That's, that will register in the algorithm and that will count as an update. And it just gives you another chance to communicate to the people that are already engaged with you. Right, okay. Uh, does anybody have any, any specific questions around crowdfunding that they've got for Andy while, while we're on topic? Um, we'll start over here and I'll come, I'll come to you in a minute. Um, I don't know if, you might have to just shout and then I'll translate. Yeah. So. 
in terms of what a film package offers, what is it do you think that seems to have the best hooks, whether or not that's cast or concept, or what is it do you think people are responding to? You know, initially, and the whole point with crowdfunding is initially they're responding to you and the people involved. So one of the big tips, actually, is, is that you, sh you should be very, when you're doing your pitch video, and this is the top of their list, is, is that make sure that you're in it. <laughs> so you as the filmmaker need to be in it. And it's, you know, it's not about begging and you need to get over that embarrassment, frankly, because actually, if you go to your mum and say, mum, I need your support on this, she'd be, well, my mum certainly, she keeps trying to offer things, so I'm like, no, mum, it's fine. <laughs> um, but actually, sort of your close circle of friends and stuff, they actually want to support what you're doing. So it, it, it's, you know, they, when going back to what I said earlier, it's not just about sort of the money is so they're investing in you so you make sure make sure you're visible in it. I'm afraid my mother's answer would be why don't you go to law school because that makes sense. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah okay well yeah. <laughs> I bet you if you asked her to tweet about you or to put something out to tell her friends about you at the thingy. Especially if the, and the other thing is that if she saw your if she saw your um, your little green line going up and up and up till you've hit the thing, then she'll be talking about you to her friends and hairdressers. But that that would definitely happen. So I, I do remember that that was something that um, that that Brad mentioned a lot uh, when he was talking about the campaigns was that if you aim if you keep your amount that you're actually trying to get low, yeah, you will reach it. And once you've reached it, people you're sort of like a this is again a, a very American thing you're then a winner you're officially a winner and once you become a winner then everybody wants to invest in you. Do you know what I don't I don't think that's I don't think it's necessarily okay. an American thing but yes what, what you said is absolutely and what you've said absolutely right I think everyone wants to see it you know if you see a campaign there for 300,000 and only one percent you're just like well am I going to put my, I'm not going to see that money am I so if I no point investing in it whereas if you've got a campaign going for 10,000 and it's already at sort of fifty percent after, you know, two one or two one or two weeks. Then of course you're more likely to sort of invest in that because it, it look, looks like it's going to happen. But he was saying that the, if you if you actually if you're looking at a particular number that you're going for, say say it was ten thousand, you wouldn't even go for ten thousand. You wouldn't write the word ten thousand anywhere because that's that's what you you go for it, something like eight thousand. Yes, yeah. and then and then. The, the, the sort of the stats say that once you reach the eight thousand, you'll 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 hit the ten thousand. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a basic human psychology thing. I think actually more than more than stats is that people carry on. They don't just stop when you hit your target. Actually, normally, when you, if you hit your target, especially if you hit your target before the end, people carry on. People carry on donating. There's a little counterintuitive. Actually, it's not what you would think. Is you know you think, oh God, I need this money. Uh, but then the other big point that I would like to make, certainly for you guys as filmmakers, is that, you know, especially with the flexible funding campaign uh, uh, feature um, that some of them offer, is that you can take little sections of your film. So you can do development, you can crowdfund that. You can do production, you can crowdfund that. You can do post-production, crowdfund that. And you can do, you know, P&A and crowdfund that and whatever. Um, and the advantage of doing that is going back to everything that we've said before, it's not just about the money. You, you know, you want people talking about it. It's also about the buzz that you're creating. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have any, it's better to actually split it up because then you have a, a there's no point, you know, there's no shame in going in the back to ask people and saying, they're not, they're, not, they're, they're also, you're giving them the opportunity to get the perk, basically, if you want to put it in those terms. Um, there was another question, sorry. You Did you hear what I said? You mentioned something yeah. about a 9% commission. I wanted to know how that's taken and uh, who gets that. Well, that's taken at the end, and it's Indiegogo that gets that. So, you know, they've created the platform for you to use, should, should you wish to. And that basically is their commission charge. It, it's actually 4% if you hit your target in either type of campaign. It only goes to 9% if you've chosen uh, a flexible campaign and you don't hit your target. Right, and they just take that, uh, they get them all the money first and then they give it to you via yeah, bank transfer. Yeah, you know, you need to allow it to a couple of weeks at the end for the, for the, well, it's either done that or via your PayPal account. So, and that happens towards the, at the end of the campaign, so. Could you pass the mic to... Um, I had a quick question because I did a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo in California. 
so I do it in dollars. Um, and the one thing that struck me at the end was a lovely two percent credit card charge that yeah, I wasn't expecting. You know, so I mean, all of all of these, that, you know, it's one of those. That all, or they do publish all of their fees. On, I, yeah, on I just wanted to so check if that's the case. If you, in, if you in choose, as well. you know, you, you can choose not to take credit card payments. I wouldn't do that because you know. Because you're, you're basically cutting a, a, a source, a, a channel for people to give you money. You can also do it via PayPal, in which case I don't believe there's a charge that's lower. Um, but all, if you look on, if you have a look on their website, you, you'll see, and, and it, on all of the websites actually, they all publish exactly what the charges are. So it's, it's pretty clear. It varies from crowdfunding platform to crowdfunding platform. Um, you know, so that there is no hard and fast rule. It's normally somewhere between four and ten percent plus whatever credit card fees. Otherwise you're asking them to swallow the credit card fees. You know, they, they, it's out of their control to pay that, because the banks charge that. So, but they, they, I do think they are being fair in the way they publish it. It's pretty, pretty, pretty clear. Fair enough. Uh, there's a, somebody in the back there. Um, yeah, two questions. Um, yeah. Could you just wait for the mic? It'll take just 10 seconds. Thank you. Hello. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask you about the First is um, this percentage. Is it a percentage of the amount that you get or the amount that you hope to raise? If you aim for three hundred thousand, could you pay nine percent of that? Or? It's the there's the final amount. So, so the final amount that you raise. Yeah. Okay. So uh, done, so if you you know you can set yourself a target of whatever you want, and you can set half a million if you want to. If you only raise ten thousand, then you only get a percentage of that that the the amount that's raised. Sure, makes makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, the other question is. Uh, do you have to give equity? And uh, the question I'd just like to ask the uh, ladies wh whether you did ever give any equity or anything. Say, say if your film makes any profit, do they get anything? Sorry. Yeah, we've, it's, we've, it's, yeah that's we've a firm no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, at the moment. I the, wonder if that will evolve, though. It is evolving already. Like Indiegogo, you, you know, the, the laws be changed in America. They passed, I think, Obama passed the Jobs Act. As soon as he signed, as soon as he became, as soon as he went into the second term, um, so that will change. You don't have to. You won't have to give equity on anything. That's the whole beauty of sort of crowdfunding is you retain crowd creative control, which I'm assuming is, as um, you know, and even in the future you won't have to. The, the answer is no at the moment. The equity doesn't exist. In the, but in future, the, the option to give away equity in your films will exist if, if you want to. You wouldn't get any share of the profit. No. Not, not as it currently stands, and, uh, and even if it does, maybe even if it does evolve into that, I think you'll be given the option to carry on with this current model, or to, you know, because actually, if, you, if you're going to offer equity in a film and it looks like it's going to go ahead, you, the, the, the amounts suddenly start going up. So. Yeah, and I did have a lawyer friend who really grilled me on that and stuff, and then it was kind of, but no one else really, did, yeah. you know, it was sort of, it's just kind of not the way it's they're not, they're not, they're not trying to get involved in sort of possession of your film at all, it's your film, so, you know, what they're doing is offering you a platform to promote your film, and, and you know, raise, create a buzz and raise some money by it. And I think especially with short films, that's kind of an easier position to be yeah. in, where you're unlikely to make profit anyway, so I don't know, you know, with features, how... How comfortable I'd feel maybe raising a huge amount of money, knowing that it was just. Well, you know, at, at the moment, it's 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 a bit of a moot point because it's not not available. I guess when they come back, when it happens, they'll come back. Sure. Is there are there any other questions? There, there are there are there are plenty more. Um, can we? The uh, mic's just over there, so we'll uh, start over there and we can. In fact, we can. Cut um, okay. Yeah, actually, there is actually an equity-based uh, crowdfunding model available, which is Crowdcube in the UK, but that's looking at raising much more significant amounts. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically to add to what people were saying, I think it's more of a donation model is how most things work and that is partly for legal reasons. Um, but Crowdcube have managed to get around it. I couldn't explain the ins and outs of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't really go into huge detail, but I, I, there are a couple actually. I think Cedars is one of the others that, here, here in the UK, it is a viable option. America is not at the moment. There are, there are a couple. Um, if you, Slated. I can't remember the names of them, but I, I looked online and saw um, uh, cinema, cinema. I can't remember the name. They're usually much more choosy about the projects they'll take on. Yeah. Like Crowdcube will only take on about one in ten projects submitted, and then out of that, about one in ten will get some funding. But their average amount of money is way higher. It's like 150, 200k per project. So 
this kind of different thing. I think it feels like a different model because I looked at Slated as well recently, just sort of out of interest. And I think it's a similar thing, and yeah, it's, it feels like a different. Yeah. The Film London website um, has a microwave section. If you're not familiar with microwave, and then within microwave there is a funding section, and within that there is a crowdfunding list of. Uh, agencies that provide crowdfunding and there were two there that did precisely what you're describing which was to um, find ways of selling equity to a large number of people and get your film funded that way. Um, the, they, the front had a, a question. Yes, uh, yes um, two, two things. Uh, yes, um, is there any, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Is there any advantage if you're a UK producer in using a UK crowdfunding type rather than an American one? Um, and the second question was actually for Emily. Um, I did apply for London Borough funding, and the uh, timetable is very, very tight. It must have been really difficult to get that money in time. Oh, do you mean after having the borough money, then doing the Indiegogo? Yeah. That's I a good question. Yeah, that is we'll interesting. That. Yeah. So, I mean, Andy, do you want to answer the, the first question? Yeah, I mean, I don't know enough about the UK platforms, because they're, they're not as big, um, and I haven't done my full research. I, I don't see any advantage now that the Kickstarter and Indiegogo both offer in pounds. I, the, the problem before was the exchange rate and getting that, getting the money to you. I wonder if it might be less competition. Do you know what? Actually, yeah, I think it's like for sponsor me, it might be that. Uh, but you know, you sort of have to analyse that. Actually, what you want is more people seeing about. So if you're getting front page on Indiegogo and they've got more for Kickstarter for that matter, and they've got like two. Two million users or what have you seeing the website then actually that works to your advantage to have more people seeing it Even so well again going back to indiegogo's sorry, algorithm that might be, can't hear it, sorry. oh sorry i beg your pardon so going back to indiegogo's algorithm you know in particular but also sponsor me do it i don't know if they've got the same sort of system you have to work your way to the front page it's not so I don't see much advantage to it. I, actually, I would, I would probably be inclined to go for the one with the most amount of users, which would be to go go Kickstarter. Okay, so moving to the to the second part of your your question, which was, um, given the tight schedule of the Borough Film Funds, how do you squeeze uh, an Indiegogo campaign into the delivery of the film? So, to put that in context, if you've got a submission deadline in December, there's a training program, there's a shortlisting development. Uh, and then a training program that lasts until March. You've got to deliver the films by the end of July. There's actually a, a pretty short turnaround there. Yeah. Um, so how how did you manage it? Uh, well, I think that's partly why I feel it was all quite touch and go, to be honest. Um, but yes, yeah, we, so really we launched. We found nub of yeah, the <laughs> So it was up again, yeah, no, really, we were going to be shooting pretty soon you, after you, the end of the campaign, but it kind of ties into what I was going to also respond to your question about, you know, what attracts people, and because our campaign, you know, we got the borough funding, made our video very quickly, and then had the campaign running as we were really in pre-production, and so, you know, people were watching the project go, actually, as it, as it grew, and so, you know, we'd go on a recce with the DP and get some amazing kind of stills of the location, so we'd post them, and then... We got our cast involved. It was we could really see that as those stages. So it, I think if it was it was kind of scary for me as a producer that the campaign was you know still going while well, we were in pre-production. But perhaps it was beneficial that it felt like such a live project to the people following it. And unfortunately, we we made our goal. Yeah. You know, again, going back, can I just chip in? You know, I, I, this is the thing with crowdfunding as a way of making money. I think you need to look at it as it's not a replacement to all the other funding sources. It should really, I, I would advise it gets used in conjunction with. So if you need to, if you need money for your, in the same way that any sort of feature film would get cobbled together, piecemeal normally, actually in my experience with my producers, mm -hmm. you know, there's a, normally a gap which, you know, crowdfunding can fill, which wasn't available to any of you <coughs> sort of five years ago. So I, th I think that's sort of, I know obviously there are questions about sort of who gets what and what, how it gets divvied up. I, mean, I would flip it around and say, well, this is a, a resource that, that gives you the opportunity to A, take control of getting funding for your film and also creating a buzz for you. Um, and B, it fills a gap where no funding exists elsewhere and, and even on features as well. I mean, I've been, I've been in appointments with these all of my sort of Hollywood producer clients and they've literally like, we, we've got a gap of 25% and we don't, we're in production, we don't think we're going to be able to fill it. Mm. And, you know, this is this is where crowdfunding is going to be useful to to, the, to a large extent, especially for filmmakers, because you can divvy up your sectors. 
you can you can divvy up sort of production from from marketing from and, and do it as different campaigns and actually it's to your advantage to do that because it creates you a following and an audience. So essentially, you're getting a pre-production focus group, is what I would say. Okay. I mean, I, I, oh, we've got more questions. Going, going straight in. Yeah, go on. Just, um, in regards to the crowdfunding and the, the boroughs from the London money, um, so we've just applied for back the boroughs, um, but it said something about that you have to be the majority investor, like you have to hold the majority. So if you earn five grand on... Well, this is maybe why it was news to Joe that my budget was oh. so... Uh, I don't know. It's fine. Do you want it's, to it's give fine. it back? <laughs> <laughs> my understanding I, I of, of the, the rules that, that, uh, that, that are fairly... that are to some extent flexible uh -huh. uh, that... <laughs> Film London should be that should should have put the most amount of money in, and I've had this during the process of selection. People have come back to me and said that is a ambiguous piece of wording, and I've agreed with them. <laughs> and I should have yeah. read the small print. But this, uh, to be fair, that was last year's uh, film fund. It's a completely different one. And uh, uh, Yeah, that's, 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 that's that was the reasoning, actually. Yes. The other thing, of course, is that uh, the, you know, I think that the way I must have seen a budget that was lower than 11 at some point, you must have said, we can make this yeah, film. Yeah, we definitely did. I think when much. we came to the interview, it was, yeah, it was actually the exactly. date. And so, and, and I think, as with all these, uh, lots of film projects, that you can have a budget at one level and make it at that level because that's all you have, and then sometimes people you know, get their credit cards out in a desperate situation, or there's all sorts of different ways in which the, the budgets will change. And as somebody who's, who's receiving a lot of, uh, of budgets for short films and seeing gaps between the award amount, which is 4,000, and the budget amount, which might be five to 10,000 pounds, um, without necessarily any firm anything firm about where that extra money is going to go. Well, crowdfunding seems to, to become this sort of uh, panacea, which it obviously can't be for all of those projects. Um, but, uh, you know, at least that, that's a, a motivation. If people, if people want to, to go that way, then they can try and in increase their budget once they receive, if they receive um, that rubber stamp or that, that approval from an institution like Film London or from the Borough Film Fund. So, uh, you know, I don't see it as a, I see it as a positive thing that um, the people should try and um, access that extra cash on top of any cash that they can squeeze out of the borough film funds. But there's, there's, there's also things like, you know, if you need to get your film to festivals, this can mean it costs money to travel. Well, that's included <laughs> yeah. in the, that yeah. included in well, that? not the travel, but the festival submissions and, and the screen. Because the other thing we wanted to do for our, because of the Indiegogo thing, was put on a really nice screening for all our funders as a kind of perk or, a, you know, reward. And, and so we had that in the budget as well. And so the kind of my final sort of shoot, so they probably, even at the shoot, it was probably, you know. Um, so, and the other thing was with the film London money is the minimum wage thing. But once it really came to, you know, seeing the scale of the project and we really wanted to do a four day shoot in the end, once we'd actually done the proper recce, it was so bitter <laughs> that the budget had yeah. to increase as well, yeah. yeah. Hi, I just wanted to ask, you were saying about splitting all the different areas up. So for a short that you've already made, so I've directed a comedy short which showed at the London Film Festival and is showing on Saturday as part of this festival. Um, but in terms Are of... Are you not going to mention the title of your short oh, film? It's Get Lucky. Good. Showing 1pm at the NFT 2. Well done. Um, so, and it's got some amazing, it's got some really well-known comedy talent in it as well, but we don't have any marketing money because we spent it all making the film. Do you think that that's, yes. it wasn't, didn't start out in the crowd? No, I mean, absolutely. Side, the, big, the big plus of that is you've got a product to give. <laughs> so that, that is the, your major perk. So, you know, you've already got something existing. So, yeah, I would. I, you know, I mean, I would do it for two reasons as well. So, you know, A, you want to get coverage for travel and for getting into festivals and for promotion. But, you know, you, you've, got a, you, you've got a finished product, which gives you a bonus over, an advantage over sort of, a non-finished product because you can give people something as a pack. 
But you can't give them things like credits on the film, obviously, because that's all well, no. done. Well, no. I mean, obviously, you have to come up with a different range of perks. But, you know, the, things, the sort of things I would do is get your talent to sign 10 copies of, of, of your DVD. So, and, you know, and then start offering those out, obviously, at a rate higher than you'd retail. Um, but, yeah. I mean, I do think, you know, again, going back to sort of the advantages of crowdfunding, is not just about the money. So if you're, if you're getting people, you're engaging an audience by, by doing a crowdfunding campaign. So, yeah, anything to, on the marketing side, you can use that for whatever you want. And can I just ask, would you again sort of split that up? So, for example, I mean, my film's also screening in Berlin on Sunday, but I, I can't go. But, for example, do you think to do one campaign to say, so me and my cast can go to Berlin? Or would you say do it as a kind of total budget and... You know, I, I think there is a limit to how much people will give you. <laughs> there, there is, you know, if, you, if you're, you're basically, by, if you're saying, right, okay, well, I want to do it for this festival, then I want to go to Cannes, and then I want to go to here, and I, you know, if you start doing that, then there's, eventually your mum's going to turn around and say no. <laughs> um, but that's fine, because if they then give you a Twitter, or a tweet, or a, a Facebook like, that still counts. So as far as I'm concerned, that has a monetary value, however small. Because then it starts opening up your thing to other people. So if people are then engaged in you, they'll help you out. So. But for but do you think it would be better to go for a lump sum or to almost try and engage people in different territories? So you know, to say we're going, you know, we could come to this country and people in that country. Can I don't think money people, or... I don't think people would give you money on a we could if you pay for it. I don't think that will happen. I think you need to say this is what we need and we need your help. That that's the way to do it. Um, so yeah, Andy's one-to-one -one -one consultancy will, uh, will, will have to continue in the, in the bar Sorry. afterwards. That's fine. Um, talking of, of which, we are going to stop at five, so um, if you've got any more questions, then let's, let's have them. Hi, I was just um, interested about the minimum wage requirements and how you kind of worked with that and whether you, uh, I don't know, how big your cost was, um, and was that kind of... Um, in your mind when planning the shoot to kind of keep it small and was any script based around those kind of quite like a budget requirements? Yeah, our cast was, was three people, uh, two little girls and one, one actor. Um, and yeah, we knew it was going to have to be a kind of small, intimate crew and, and that worked best for the story anyway, actually. And um, we, yeah, cause we were shooting outside London as well, so there was that travel and accommodation involved and um, in places where we didn't have any connections or anywhere we could, you know, stay. So four people had to stay in caravans, but um, it was very cosy. Um, yeah, so that, yeah, and we had to do the minimum wage for the, those few days. But yeah, not for many people, obviously, because of that cost. Okay. Any other questions? Hang on. Can you pass the mic Um, question for Emily. Um, could you describe, if you were to do it again, obviously the, the funding, Indiegogo and things, um, just a few things that you would do differently that maybe you learned from this class campaign? I mean, don't, obviously don't give away your secrets, but um, things that you would do differently and just that you learned from, you know, from doing this one? Yeah. Um, I think. And like I was sort of alluding to at the beginning, I was maybe a bit timid at first about really bombarding people. And, and I'd heard that you have to hit people up eight times before they'll contribute. Whereas I was thinking, oh, if I've, I've emailed them twice, that means they don't want to. But actually, I did kind of keep pushing because I was in this desperate situation where we were going to shoot and we needed the money. So I did kind of have people in. And there were people who, or I'd sort of see a friend and think, oh, she's been ignoring my email. And then, you know, and it turned out they were going to give £15. They just needed it. Now they kept forgetting. And so I think my advice would definitely be to, to not hold back yeah. from... From, you, know, you know, there's no point in being shy about coming yeah. forward. You know, basically, in marketing speak, you have to see it two or three times to get a buzz going before yeah, people register. So, you know, and, and actually, the more avenues you tap into, so you email them, you do it on your crowdfunding platform, you get journalists or radio people to talk about your projects, you get people who are interested in the subject matter of your project. The more people you have talking about it, the more people, the, the, the more buzz you get going, the more likely you are to get people from outside of your network contributing. And, and that sort of is the ultimate game of it. So, 
Um, thank you for giving away your secrets. Carry on. I wish I had more <laughs> like secrets. More, more. Really? Oh, sort of beyond, beyond, the other... uh, beyond the Indiegogo or crowdsourcing uh, okay. campaign, well, the... is there anything else that, that's um, any other top tips for people to setting out trying to get a short film off the ground? Um, I just think try, just be sort of, just leave no stone unturned, I suppose. You know, go to every company you can think of, even different types of, you know, I think, I think because that's Even it. companies just outside of the film stuff, you, yeah. mean, you know, things like marketing companies, if they're going to get some, I know it sounds a bit odd because you can't offer them publicity, but very often they're, they're happy to give in kind. So, you know, if you get 50 pairs of Reebok that you can then flog out as a perk, my God, <laughs> if they're signed by someone in the field, they're even better. And, and those have people have used those as perks for, for various campaigns, not just from the film sector, but from elsewhere. So, you know, I, I think, you know, you, have, you sort of have to think a little bit outside the box. Okay, and there's some people here with questions. Um, should pass on the mic? I was just really wondering about Film London and you're absolutely right, yeah. Well, I mean, I've not made any major uh, announcements because there, there aren't any that I'm fully aware of at this point in time. Like I said, we will make we will do another Borough Film Fund Challenge in 2013, if nothing else. Um, however, as far as I'm aware, the BFI are doing a, a talk at the London Short Film Festival on Friday. I don't know when it is. When is it, Nia? It's four o'clock. Four o'clock? Yeah, there are a few places left, so you'll have to get RSVP quite, quite soon. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to be making any, any announcements, but those, um, those would be the people to ask what is the strategy for, from the BFI. Um, Nothing from London. Well, <laughs> at this point in time, our, our hands are are pretty much tied. We, we've gone to skill set. Um, we've gone to skill set to get the money for the Borough Film Funds. We hope that we'll be able to get that money again for next year. And we hope that there will be something um, in the mid-range that will be somewhere between the exorbitantly huge um, BFI 2012 20 times 50,000 pound films, or 16 times 50,000 pound films, which you may or may not have heard of, that happened last year, in which those films are still uh, delivering, and they were made to Lighthouse. Um, BFI has released a uh, national talent development document, which uh, is on its website, and Film London gets name-checked twice, in terms of what the strategy is, but as far as I know, that's that's as much as I know, and it'll happen beyond April 2013, which is coming up very soon. So, like I said, you should really... Uh, Flamin uh, has just closed for submissions, so yes, they, they've got funding in place from Arts Council to carry on. Microwave don't have a current uh, strategy for a new submission deadline. I don't know what the deadline is for that. You'd have to ask the microwave team again. Um, I, I ask them on a regular basis. Some people call me and ask me, and then I say, is there any news on the microwave submission? As far as I know, there isn't going to be one in 2013, but it, it, you know, that things do change. Um, so that's the, the long and the short of it. While I've got the mic, um, if you are interested in, in, uh, in knowing what the latest is, I have an email which I'll send to anybody that, uh, that emails me, and production at filmlondon.org.uk is my is an email that will come straight to me, production at filmlondon.org.uk, and I have an email called London Regional Film Funds, and I update it whenever I hear of anything new, uh, and I uh, send that to, to all comers. Um, so, for example, the Wellcome Trust is something that uh, I mention annually, because they are a big charity that actually has money, and they're giving it out on a monthly basis to short films, that they give it out to projects that throw light or shed light on things that have a biomedical uh, connection. So that could be mental health, sexual health, physical health, all these things are, uh, are, are quite broad and they do actually fund projects. Has anybody even tried to fathom their website? I saw somebody that was kind of making grumbling noises. Is it a, difficult, is it a particularly difficult website to navigate? 
funding for the welfare yeah. uh, and uh, this is just my opinion um, it is very science led I think and you really do need to get together with a scientist I think that they want uh, they do want the the films to be scientifically correct yes yeah, we tried with physics and it wasn't um, <laughs> but I mean, I, I saw a film that they funded that had John Hurt and Phyllis Delore in it, which was essentially um, Fifty First Dates meets an old people's home. Um, effectively, it was about uh, a, a woman who, who, a man who meets a woman and falls in love with her during the course of a day, and you discover that um, he does that every day, and she's used to it. And that, that somehow, even though it wasn't particularly. Uh, sciencey shed light on yes. uh, oh, yes, dementia, that's true, yes. and that was a drama, it yeah, was a very yeah. straightforward run of the mill drama, which they uh, which they funded. Yes. So I'm just, if you were starting from nothing, you might want to consider looking at these themes and seeing how you could fit into that, because they do have funds of up to twenty thousand um, pounds, which is more than anywhere else has got, um, and they they give it out on a, on a regular on a regular basis. Um, that's just one example of, uh, of links that I would send out. And anything else that I become aware of, such as Collaborate, which you probably all know about, I uh, let people know about that. And Ideas Tap, if you're under 26, they usually have a film fund of up to 5K around about February every year. Anybody heard about that yet? Ideas Tap, um, for under 26 year olds, um, they usually have a film fund of up to 5K. Sorry. Yeah, boo, yes. Yeah. Um, but it might be that a, a, you know, a, key, a key member of your team um, could apply on your behalf, I don't know. So that's, that's another example. There you go. That's the, the, the film fund thing. Um, and we're, we're coming up to the end of our, our time, but if you've got any last questions, then go for it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any experience of commercial sponsorship? Like, if there was a particular theme in your film which might apply to, I don't know, say washing powder or washing machines or something, and what sort of restrictions that's likely to place on you creatively? Do you, do you have an example of that? Okay. Put one example of product placement, uh, which actually gave us a surprise, but, you know, we thought we'd give it a go. We needed a car. It was quite a sort of wealthy couple in the film. Um, and so, you know, we ideally we wanted them to be driving a kind of latest Audi, which we obviously couldn't afford in the budget. And um, yeah, we emailed, uh, actually we did it through a product placement company um, who then contacted Audi and got us the car and it was for a short film. And it was, yeah, it was surprisingly enough, we, we got it. What was the so, name of the product um, placement company? I don't know, I think it's a big film group or little film group. Yeah, um, yeah, I think That's it's a big best. film group, I think. That's a lead? Yeah, yeah. And it cost us nothing. They delivered it, they picked it up, and we had to pay for petrol. Um, but, yeah. And they put no restrictions on And no restrictions. I even actually, because I contacted the market, so I said, what should we put in the credits? And they said only the product placement company needed a credit. There was, there was no restrictions. I mean, they read the script, and I actually, I really wanted to give, I, you know, tried to give it as good a shot as I could. So the email I wrote initially was very kind of, you know, I really thought out how could, the, you know, why I looked at what sort of Audi's target audience is and kind of tried to align it to the film and, you know, I, I did think it through. I didn't just say, oh, we need an Audi for a short film and, and somehow it worked, I guess. <laughs> okay, any, any, other, any other questions? The gentleman in the second row, there's a microphone coming. Uh, what are the actual stages of the, the microwave, like, film fund? Because I've worked with... Um, uh, ben Drew, who done your Ill Manners, and, um, he said about the stages once he got selected, sort of like you have to go like film school and eventually. Uh, that's a, sort of quite a, a, a long question, and I don't, I don't necessarily know the answer because um, <coughs> I, I don't do micro school. Uh, my colleague Kevin Dolan actually uh, was going to be here this evening representing Film London, but unfortunately he's got food poisoning, um, so he would answer that question. But yes, th there are lots of stages, and one of them is micro school. More projects. Um, are, are selected for micro school than are eventually green lit, and it's uh, a process of, of developing the projects. This four days intensive training in peer review and mentoring and master classes, um, and even then it takes a long time to get the rest of the money together because microwave is a feature film project where the maximum budget is 120, and Film London only puts in 60. You've got to find the other 60. 
So you can imagine it's, it's a, that's even worse than an Indiegogo campaign. You've got to find £60,000 in order to complete the project. There you go. Well, that's, that was one of the reasons why we met with Brad Wyman was to find out more about how that worked. Okay, going, going, gone. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for coming.